Thank you very much uh, for joining this discussion tonight on a very interesting and important subject, I believe. I'd like to say in Zurich, we distinguish between the University of Zurich and ETH Zurich. These are two universities just next door to each other. And as far as I know, they're jointly associated also to a university hospital, which of course uh, fits today's subject pretty well. Um, I will split up the 20 minutes probably into several blocks to enable the discussion to be a bit more targeted. And now I'm really going into my presentation. Today's lecture and discussion will be about a particularly dramatic and emotional, but also legally and scientifically challenging subject, triage. Given the digital and data revolution, will this lead to technological selection or even to the mechanization of deaths? Before I go into this, however, let me start with a little disclaimer. This presentation critically reflects on proper and improper uses of technology. It is not meant to be a criticism of medical doctors, staff, or care personnel. On the contrary, I would like to see the human element strengthened. Health data overall bear great promises for a healthier and happier life, but they also make us vulnerable. Making use of millions or billions of data points, machine learning and artificial intelligence are now creating new benefits. However, they can also have undesirable implications, often in the sense of undesired side effects. Examples for this are discrimination, the mechanization of deaths, and genetic, social, behavioral, or technological selection, which may imply eugenic effects or social Darwinism. Therefore, handing over decision-making responsibility or control to machines could be dangerous, particularly if we are talking about triage. Traditionally, triage decisions are considered to be extremely problematic and acceptable only in war times or extreme disasters, if at all. If triage measures would no longer be limited to such situations, but become a new normal, we would consider such uses of triage procedures as unconstitutional, which must be prevented by political and legal oversight. And I'm pretty sure we'll have some discussion on that later on. But this is the motivation of the paper that was circulated with the title Triage 4.0 on Death Algorithms and Technological Selection. Is today's data-driven medical system still compatible with the Constitution? And this has been triggered besides the German and European debate about triage by publications such as the one over here, which appeared in MIT's technology review. And it says, doctors are using AI to triage COVID-19 patients. The tools may be here to stay. So recently, it seems that in some countries, triage has become an everyday practice and such life and death decisions are increasingly assisted or even taken by algorithms using highly sensitive personal data, particularly health data in a particularly problematic context. Let's remember the physician's pledge also known as the Declaration of Geneva, which demands and promises, I will respect the autonomy and dignity of my patient. I will maintain the utmost respect for human life. I will not permit considerations of age, disease or disability, creed, ethnic origin, gender, nationality, political affiliation, race, sexual orientation, social standing, or any other factor to intervene between my duty and my patient. So 
given that algorithms are increasingly entering medicine, is this still guaranteed? Recently, a paper by Binant et al. listed an impressive number of 107 prognostic models for predicting progression to severe disease, intensive care unit admission, ventilation, intubation, length of hospital stay, and mortality risk. The sobering conclusion of the study is that the models were rated as having a high risk of bias, overfitting due to small or modest sample sizes, and exaggerating reported predictive performance. Hence, the researchers concluded, we cannot yet recommend any of the identified prediction models for widespread use in clinical practice. For example, models incorporating age and or race face a conflict between accuracy and discrimination. Uh, risk prediction models for lung disease, kidney disease, breast cancer, death after heart failure, and other illnesses assign lower scores to patients of color, possibly because the current health system is biased against them, at least in some countries, it seems. This may result in less or worse machine learning based treatment recommendations as compared to white patients. In other words, discrimination effects in the past, which are reflected by treatment performance data used to train machine learning in the AI systems, may perpetuate discrimination in the future. Concretely, this could mean that algorithm based triage would put a person of color into the no treatment group where a white person would be treated perhaps, and so on. One of the related problems is the algorithms are typically subject to business secrecy and are frequently updated such that their effects are partially unknown and in some cases are not verifiable due to a lack of algorithmic transparency. Accordingly, their results may change unpredictably. Nevertheless, algorithms may exert epistemic authority. The compliance with algorithmic recommendations often seems to be advised. It may also appear to be an advantage, for example, in case a lawsuit later occurs. However, Business secrecy is not the only reason why expert or AI systems are often lacking transparency. Machine learning systems have often been characterized as black boxes, because in contrast to what is common in science and in medical research, machine learning and AI-based systems are typically not based on transparent, validated, and reproducible causal relations. Moreover, as machine learning progresses, machine learning based decisions and the outcome may change without any explanation given. Because learning goes on and on and on, and that changes decision making. Moreover, data driven decisions are often very sensitive to details of the algorithm used or the data set evaluated. In other words, taking a data-driven decision using a different data set or a different algorithm may result in pretty different priorities. Consequently, the selection of patients who are disadvantaged by triage decisions or medically prioritized can greatly vary with the procedures, algorithms, or data sets used. Therefore, the approach of data-driven decisions may suffer from an undesirable but hidden degree of randomness and arbitrariness, which is particularly worrying when it comes to life and death decisions. Therefore, data-driven or evidence-based does not automatically mean that the resulting decisions are scientifically objective and sound at the level one would like to have for grave decisions. Despite these methodological shortcomings, vital decisions are increasingly taken on the basis of algorithms. 
the legitimacy and meaningfulness of the algorithms and personal data used in such contexts may be questioned as well. For example, some of the algorithms seem to be based on life expectancy, even though it may vary a lot. There are at least two undesirable consequences. <clears throat> While life expectancy is actually quite variable, the application of algorithms to decide the level of life support may determine the lifespan pretty much in the sense of a self-fulfilling prophecy. Chance is eliminated. And while the expectation of a long life may be rewarded, the expectation of a short life would be almost like a death sentence, particularly when the prediction is incorrect. This actually happens. And there is uh, not only one famous example, Lucas Hartmann's life expectancy has been wrongly assessed uh, to a significant amount, and this is well documented. And he only discovered it because he is an expert in algorithms and he looked into the details. Of course, if algorithms were furthermore developed with the aim to meet limited budgets or reduce costs, this could imply that AI-based technological selection might even shorten lifespans systematically. This is a serious threat since, after all, big data-driven medical decisions are often also supposed to ensure the efficient use of available funds. Such a development can shift the focus away, however, from human dignity and equality to economic profit and it may obfuscate the rationing of healthcare resources. If in addition, individual insurance coverage is taken into account, social selection could happen. Furthermore, as known from recent AI research, such discriminatory effects can even occur were not intended at all, namely as a result of the opacity of the algorithms or the training data used. In conclusion, while machine learning and the AI offer, I believe, many promising potentials for medicine and health altogether, the application of algorithms to life and death decisions can imply technological selection and a mechanization of deaths, particularly if these are allowed to act autonomously. Digital technology, without any doubt, holds many promises for a better future. But to unfold their full benefits, it must be ensured that big data, artificial intelligence, and other technological innovations are used in a fair way, and that problematic applications are avoided. Otherwise, it is to be feared that the democratic principle of equality and many other principles uh, will increasingly be replaced by discriminatory scoring systems and violations of human rights or human dignity, which would ultimately lead to a fundamentally different society. And so the World Health Organization's guidance on ethics and governance of artificial intelligence for health concludes if an AI technology is trained to maximize global health, it may do so by allocating most resources to healthy people in order to keep them healthy and not to a disadvantaged population. Furthermore, it warns, use of AI tools for triage or rationing is one of the most compelling reasons for ensuring adequate governance or oversight. The possibilities of unintended bias and flawed inference emphasize the need to protect people and processes from computational misadventure. <laughs>